this is me Pooja MK Rao. I welcome you all to my online classes where you can learn absolutely free of cost. Then what are you waiting for? Just go and subscribe my channel and come back and don't forget to hit the bell icon or else you won't be notified about my videos. Okay, now let's start the class. In my previous videos, I have already explained you about the land, soil, water. Okay, so what are the uses and how they are important to us and how we can consider them as the important resources. Okay, so it's time for us to learn the importance of the natural vegetation and wildlife resources, isn't it? And I think most of you know that natural vegetation and wildlife resources are an excellent and important resources for us. See, we get the all the food we eat, all the cloths and each and everything we wear and the paper even we are writing comes from trees. So tree is a part of natural vegetation, isn't it? And our biosphere is composed of plants, trees. If plants and trees are not there, then we won't be able to survive. Not only cloths and uh, food and paper, even the oxygen we are getting comes from the trees, isn't it? So let's start the natural vegetation. Now, natural vegetation and wildlife resources is a part of natural resources and it is also a part of biotic resources. Now what you will think what is biotic resources? So biotic resources are all the resources which comes which are the living which are in which are there living forms which are there in the biosphere. So all the living beings in the environment are the biotic resources. Okay, so natural vegetation and wildlife resources are the type of biotic resources and it's a part of natural resources. Okay, now let's start the lesson. I will request you all to take out your books because in this class, in my videos, I would like to explain each and line, each and every line so that you don't get any confusion. Okay, so let's take out your book and read along with me. Okay, so the natural vegetation and wildlife. Some school children were visiting an exhibition on handicraft. So, there we will find lot of exhibitions on handicraft, isn't it? And most of us, we will visit those exhibitions. The articles in the exhibition were collected from different parts of the country. Mona picked up a bag and exclaimed, this is a beautiful handbag. Yes, it is made from jute, the teacher said. So, one of the students, she picked up a bag which was made up of jute. So, don't you think jute is a type of natural resources we are getting and it's a type of uh, natural resources we are getting from plant and we can consider it as a natural vegetation, isn't it? So, this is a beautiful handbag. It is made from jute. The teacher said, do you see those basket, lampshades and chairs? So you have seen lampshades, baskets and chairs. These all are made up of bamboos, isn't it? Sometimes these are made up of bamboo. Sometimes chairs are made up of wood, isn't it? So these all comes from the natural vegetation. Those are of canes and bamboos. In the eastern and northeastern humid regions of India, bamboos grow in plenty. So where does bamboo grow? Bamboos grows in the eastern and northeastern humid regions of India, wherever the climate is humid. Jassy was excited to see a silk scarf. See this beautiful scarf. The teacher explained that silk is obtained from silk worms that are bred on mulberry trees. So silk, we all know that it is. It comes from silk worm. And where does the silk worm stay? It's, it breeds on the mulberry tree, isn't it? So, you can consider this as a part of natural vegetation only, isn't it? The children understood that plants provide us with many different products that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Now, they have given one, do you know? Rainwater harvesting is the process of collecting rainwater from rooftops and directing it to an appropriate location where it is stored for future use. Okay, now what does rainwater harvesting mean? They have said. On an average, one spell of rain for two hours is enough. So this, do you know, is belongs to the previous lesson. Okay, not previous lesson, previous water resources. Okay, so uh, you can read this. Natural vegetation and wildlife exist only in the narrow zone of contact between the 
lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere that we call biosphere. Now what is biosphere? Biosphere is the narrow zone of contact between the lithosphere, hydrosphere and atmosphere. So now let's see what is biosphere. What is biosphere? Okay, so you can take down the and write down the answer of the questions also because these questions only will come for your exam, isn't it? If you read through throughout the book and thoroughly the book, you can answer any questions, isn't it? So let's see. So it is the narrow zone of contact between the lithosphere sphere hydrosphere and atmosphere atmosphere okay now in the biosphere living beings are interrelated and interdependent on each other for survival. Now, how you can say this? Then in biosphere, living beings are interrelated and interdependent on each other. See, we human beings, we are dependent for our food or for clothes, for our everything or on the animals, on the plants, isn't it? So, the uh, animals who are uh, herbivorous, they are dependent on the plants, which is also part of ecosystem. And... The carnivorous animals and the omnivorous animals, they are dependent on the animals and the herbs. So each and every one is dependent for their survival on the other organism which exists in the ecosystem. So thus we can say that the every living beings in this ecosystem are interdependent and interrelated to each other. Okay. So this life supporting system is known as ecosystem. Now what is ecosystem? This is very important question. What is an ecosystem? Okay, so the answer will be in the biosphere, biosphere, living beings, beings are interdependent. And then and interrelated to each other. To each other. This life supporting system, this life supporting system is known as known as ecosystem. Okay, so I hope the ecosystem is clear to you. So let's read further. Vegetation and wildlife are valuable resources. So already you have somewhat understood the importance of wildlife and natural vegetation, isn't it? And how it is an important resources. So plants provide us with timber, give shelter to animals, Produce oxygen we breathe. So in the starting of this lesson or this class or this video, I have already explained you about the importance of the plants and the natural vegetation. How much important they are to us and what things they are providing to us. So this is only they have given in this chapter. Okay. So for growing See, plants provide us with timber, give shelter to animals, produce oxygen we breathe, protect soil, so essential for growing crops, act as sh shelter beds, help in storage of underground water, give us fruit, nuts, latex, turpentine oil, gum, medicinal plants even gives us medicine, isn't it? And also the paper that is so essential for our studies. There are innumerable uses of plants and you can add some more. If you find some more uses, you can add, okay? Because there are innumerable uses of plants. So, the question can come like this. What are the uses of plant? Or how plant is an important resources, okay? 
So the question may come like how the plants act as an important resources or simply what are the uses of plants okay what are what are the things plants provide what are the things plants provide us provide us okay the answer will be same even the use of plants also will be same so the answer will be plants provide us plants provide us number one timber from timber we get wood timber is wood from wood we can make furnitures we can make the things which are made up of wood and we can you use it for fencing for not only for all these things even some discarded woods which are not used even the thin logs of wood which are not used for making furniture can be used as a fuel isn't it for cooking and all so it provides timber which is very important in our daily life next it gives shelter it provides shelter two different animals two different animals so it is providing shelter to birds some insects isn't it so so many insects so many microorganisms so many birds they take shelter where on the trees sometimes on the leaves and on the trees isn't it on some plants so it provides shelter protects produce oxygen we breathe produces oxygen we breathe protects soil protects soil essential for cultivation cultivation helps in storage of underground water helps in storage of underground water okay so even i'm erasing this one and i'm writing here okay or else you won't you can't see properly okay so it provides us us food fruits nuts latex even paper also paper etc it provides medicinal medicinal plants okay so even gum even turpentine oil so many things you can get from plants now comes the wildlife now what wildlife includes what wildlife are the insects the birds the animals comes under the wildlife vegetation okay so wildlife includes animals birds insects as well as aquatic life forms fishes turtles tortoise and dolphins this all comes under wildlife they provide us milk meat wool hides insects like bees provide us honey help in pollination of flowers have an important so most of you heard about the pollination of flowers how the pollination of flowers happens it sticks to the uh, insect and when the insect transfers from one place to other this spread spread the pollen grains of the plants or flowers and thus the pollination occurs isn't it so insects are very important when for pollination isn't it the birds feed on insects and act as decomposers as well vulture due to its ability to feed on dead livestock so you we all know that vulture where what he what he eats what it eats it eats the dead dead things which are fallen on the surface of the earth 
so it acts as a scavenger it cleans the ecosystem okay so it acts as a sweeper you can tell as a sweeper bird also even the crow is also called as a sweeper bird because all the dirty things or whatever all the things you throw on the food items you throw on the earth surface the crow the uh, and the vultures they takes it away vulture take eats mostly the animals which are dead animals which are died on the surface of the earth so you can call that these are important for the ecosystem and so animals big or small all are integral to maintaining balance in the ecosystem so even one type of animals if gets extinct we will face some loss in the ecosystem because we are all interdependent to each other isn't it so for that sake we should maintain balance we shouldn't harm the other animals now when do you know they have given and i think we don't know this because this is something new to each of one of us vultures in the indian subcontinent were dying of kidney failure so we have heard human beings dying of kidney failure but it's similar to the vultures also because they are dying out of kidney failure now why because shortly after scavenging livestock treated with diclofenac the use of diclofenac a painkiller that is similar to aspirin or ibuprofen efforts are on to ban the drug for livestock use and breed vultures in captivity because there is a lot of use of painkillers like diclofenac ibuprofen and aspirin so these uses these painkillers they are harming the kidneys of the vultures because whenever the livestock they are using it whenever they are dying the effect will be there in the body and whenever the vultures are eating this uh, livestock they are facing kidney failures okay next comes the distribution of natural vegetation the growth of vegetation depends on primarily on temperature and moisture so it's very important for the vegetation to grow to get the proper sunlight we you know in case of plants they produce food by photosynthesis to produce photosynthesis they require sunlight they require water so that they can make their food so wherever sunlight is pro properly is there and wherever water they are getting properly vegetation will flourish there the major vegetation types of the world are grouped as forest grassland scrubs and tundra so what are the classification of vegetations let's classify it it's vegetation okay so vegetation vegetation number 1 is forest number 2 is grassland number 3 is scrubs and number 4 is tundra okay now what are forest so forest is a part of ecosystem you know and wherever we get more rainfall there it, the growth of the trees will be more and it comprises of forest in forest there are big plants and there you can see and it provides shelter to some of the wild animals isn't it so the more water prone areas or wherever more rainfall is there those areas are known as forest because the growth of the trees will be more there okay in areas of heavy rainfall huge trees may thrive the forest are thus associated with areas having abundant water supply as the amount of moisture increases the size of trees and the density reduces now short stunted trees and grasses grow in the region of moderate rainfall so wherever there is moderate rainfall there will be short trees and those trees or grasses will be predominant there grasses short trees will be available in those type of regions where the amount of rainfall is moderate okay so it this areas are suitable for inhabiting and suitable for staying for the human beings isn't it so short stunted trees and grasses grow in the regions of moderate rainfall forming the grassland of the world now what are scrubs scrubs are the thorny trees which are found in the deserted areas so in deserted areas where there is very low rainfall dry areas you will see scrubs thorny plants why what does this how does this thorny plants help 
they accumulate water inside them so that the water doesn't go with transpiration now you know what is the process of transpiration the evaporation of water from the surface of the plants from the stomata stomata the plants are having stomata through that the loss of because they will use a very less amount of water for photosynthesis less of the amount of water they won't require so what they will do they will transpire they will excrete that through stomata of the plants or the leaves okay so from the aerial surface the evaporation of water from the aerial surface through stomata is known as transpiration now what comes the tundra tundra vegetation of cold polar regions now cold polar regions are having tundra vegetation the vegetation of colder regions we can call tundra so why because there will be very less uh, vegetation and very rare very rare vegetation will be predominant there in those areas so vegetation of cold polar regions comprise of mosses and lichens so you have heard about mosses and lichens that something non vascular plants which are not having uh, means vascular tissue for transferring of thus food and water in they don't have xylem and phloem they don't have xylem and phloem to transfer the water and food inside their boy means inside the plants okay so instead of that they have some internal other tissues okay so these are the mosses and lichens are the non vascular plants which are predominant in tundra vegetation okay so today there are many more so i hope the vegetation is clear to you what are forest it, it this forest will grow in which type of regions heavy rainfall heavy rainfall okay grassland moderate rainfalls grasslands are short uh, shrubs or plants which will grow in the grassland shrubs are thorny plants thorny plants which grows in dry areas and tundra is the vegetation of of polar colder regions regions comprises mainly of mosses and lichens comprises mainly of mosses and lichens so i hope this vegetation is clear to classification of vegetation okay now let's read further today there are many more people in the world than there were two centuries back so nowadays we have more human beings more people in our world before we have 20 centuries ago there were not this many people living in our world so nowadays our population is increasing day by day every single day it is increasing isn't it so to feed the growing so what is the what is happening to the our demands are also increasing our food habits and everything is changing we need more food we need everything more so this is the demand of more is damaging the environment okay so to feed the growing numbers large areas of forest have been cleared to grow crops so most of the forest areas were cleared to grow crop not only to grow crop for their habitation to make homes lot of to make industries factories for making every institutions we have cut down so many forest and we have deforested so many forest isn't it so this has created a damage to the environment forest cover all over the world is vanishing rapidly there is an urgent need to conserve this valuable resource since forest are decreasing so most of the wild animals like tiger and uh, elephants birds which resides in those forest areas they will also become extinct and they are something coming to become they are becoming endangered because if they are homes if they don't have homes how they will survive if they don't have food how they will survive their food and shelter comes from the forest isn't it so how they will survive if they don't have you ha can you survive if you don't have food water and shelter you can't then how the animals can survive if they don't have food they don't have shelter to stay so the deforestation of forest 
is creating a damage to the environment is a threat for the environment so now comes after reading every all these things and every point how they are important and what is the damage how how it, how it is becoming a threat for the environment it's time to learn how to conserve the environment or how to conserve this natural vegetation how to protect this wildlife how to protect the natural vegetation and how to save the environment by conserving this natural resources so let's read how we can conserve this natural resources first of all before reading i would like to say that if you are not deforesting if you are afforesting if you are planting trees the way and if you are not wasting unnecessary papers unnecessary food unnecessary things then you can save the environment so now let's read how what they have said okay to so the first main thing is you should afforest instead of deforesting okay so forests are our wealth plants give shelter to the animals and together they maintain the ecosystem so we all know that plants is providing lot of things to us so we it's like our mother nature we shouldn't damage it isn't it but what we can do because of the increased population our increasing demand we are just damaging our environment now changes of climate and human interference can cause the loss of natural habitats of the plants and animals many species have become vulnerable or endangered and some are on the verge of extinction so there are lot of animals which have extinct like uh, tasmanian tiger black rhinoceros this all have extinct passenger some birds like passenger do uh, pigeon dodos this all some flowers like cry well the cry of violet cooksmania and cooksonia sorry cooksonia abyss millery this all uh, plants and animals they have extinct we you can't find this things this animal the species of animals and plants okay once again because they have already in extinct and some are endangered like tiger elephant asian elephant are endangered because if you don't conserve them if you don't protect their shelter if you don't uh, if you don't conserve them they are going to extinct so they are known as endangered which are on the verge to get extinct like you can say uh, this tiger uh, leopard and uh, pandas gorillas rhinoceros and asian elephants they are all endangered because if you don't protect their shelter if you don't conserve them they are going to extinct and you and our future generations and you won't be able to see them anymore okay so now let's read what they have given in the chapter many species have become vulnerable or endangered and some are on the verge of extinction deforestation soil erosion tsunami like uh, landslide are some of the human and natural factors so see even though we don't damage the environment there are so many lot of natural factors like tsunami earthquake volcanic eruptions and the forest fire okay so all these things will will definitely to some extent they will damage the forest if on top of that if we damage it then how there will be no traces of wildlife and natural vegetation will be found on the earth okay so we should not damage them on the major concern the poaching which result in a sharp decline in the number of particular species so you know you have heard about the term poaching which, which is illegal killing of animals for selling different organs or the parts of those animals like the trunk of the uh, the teeth of the elephant leopard skin tiger skin this all people will kill those animals wild animals and they will sell outside so this is known as poaching illegal killing of animals for selling their different parts or different organs outside okay so poaching is a uh, very dangerous threat for the environment the animals are forced for collection and illegal trade of hide skins nails teeth horns as well as feathers so peacock feathers these all even sometimes see peacocks they will um, just they will relieve their feathers but still sometimes these peacocks and different birds are killed just to uh, get their feathers some of these animals are tiger lion elephant deer black buck crocodile rhinoceros snow leopard ostrich and peacock 
they can be conserved by increasing awareness so this animals can be conserved by first increasing the awareness to all the person we should they should be aware of the importance they are playing in our environment okay national parks wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves are made to protect our natural vegetation and wildlife so different national parks wildlife sanctuaries were made to protect our wildlife and natural vegetation conservation of creeks lakes and wetlands is necessary to save the precious resource from depletion so some more important things we methods or measures we can use are conservation of creeks lands and wetlands we should conserve to save the precious resource from depletion there is a balance in the environment if the relative number of species is not disturbed human activities in several parts of the world have disturbed the natural habitats of many species due to indiscriminate cleaning several birds and animals have either become extinct or are on the verge of extinction okay so they have given one read the news items and forest fire so i have explained you about the forest fire i have not explained i have just said the forest fire which is a major threat for the forest that this forest fire can be caused by natural phenomenon or sometimes because of the human uh, um, humans are also responsible for this forest fire now it occurs mainly due to three reasons first is natural fire due to lightning sometimes when thunder storms comes so the trees they catch natural fire through lightning fire due to heat generated in the litter due to carelessness of people so people most of the time they throw litters or Uh, dirty things papers and all dust uh, in the forest so sometimes heat can generate inside the and sometimes people will go they will smoke inside the forest and they will just keep some part of that uh, there is uh, you know, their cigarettes or something they will throw and it can catch the fire and it can burn the total forest we become so careless that we don't think about the plants okay fire purposely caused by local inhabitant mischief maker miscreant so sometimes purposely people will do like that means they will just throw a match box or something they will intentionally they will fire the forest okay so this prevention of fire so there should be control we should understand first thing we should understand we should be aware of the importance of the plants and each and every person should be aware of the importance how the wildlife and natural vegetation are important resources for us okay awareness program like social forestry and vana mahotsava should be encouraged at the regional and community level so in regional level and community level importance vana mahotsava means where we will discuss about the importance of forests vana mahotsava vana means forest mahotsava importance means what's the importance of the forest vano mahotsava should be done in some regional and community level where people will be will be made aware of the importance of the forest okay school children should be encouraged to bird watch and visit nature camp so that they appreciate the habitat of the varied species so school children should be Uh, encourage that they should see what's happening in their nearby environment or surrounding should bird watch they should be careful that whether any damage is happening to their environment or not now it is not said that you should go a far distance you should bird watch that environment no whatever environment or where you are living that uh, the areas nearby you you can bird watch that and you can keep it safe okay so they and they have given a glossary means national park i think most of you know that what is a national park a natural area designated to protect the ecological integrity of one or more ecosystem for the present and the future generation actually national park there will be natural vegetation wildlife so more uh, more than eco means one type of uh, ecosystem will be there okay so it's a natural area designated to protect it is actually made to protect the ecosystem and where you can see birds animals plants where these all are taken care of in simpler manner this is okay so they have given in a complex manner if you don't understand just understand that it is a place where you will be uh, where they will construct a natural and safer vegetation with plants and uh, some like forest natural vegetation they will design there and so that the birds the animals can live there they can thrive over there okay 
so that is national park to conserve what is the importance why they are constructed or designed to save the to conserve the uh, birds animals and plants okay many countries have passed laws against the trade as well as killing of birds and animals in india killing lions tigers deer great indian bustards and peacock is illegal so many countries they have uh, mentioned a law which is against the trade of all these animal skin and all okay so instead of the in, in case of india not instead of that in case of india in india we are also having law which says that there we shouldn't kill lions tigers deers great indian bustards and peacock okay it's illegal and international convention cites has been established that lists several species of animals and birds in which trade is prohibited okay so uh, an international convention cites has been established now what is the cites it is the the full form of cites is the convention on international trade okay i will write down c i t e s the convention the convention on international trade in endangered endangered species species of wild fauna and flora okay so the convention of international trade in endangered species okay so the full form of cites is the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora okay so the what they have stated they have given list of several species which shouldn't be killed okay and birds in which trade is prohibited conservation of plants and animal is an ethical duty of every citizen so it's a moral duty of each and every citizen ethical means moral duty of each and every citizen to conserve birds and animals and our plants also okay now what they have given one we are at the end of our chapter and they have given one glossary in that glossary they have given the meaning of biosphere reserves biosphere reserves series of protected areas linked through a global network intended to demonstrate the relationship between conservation and development so biosphere reserves series of protected areas what are this this demonstrate the relationship between conservation how to conserve them and how to how by conserving them we can develop our country or our place okay so we are at the end of this chapter already we have completed this chapter i hope you like this video if you like this video you can hit the like button and share with your friends if you think it's beneficial for you and if you have any question regarding this chapter whole chapter from the first video to this video you can pin me down in the comment section i will definitely answer them okay and just recommend me if i need to improve in any part of the any any part of my videos then you can recommend it with that in also in the comment section okay so thank you for staying tuned with us and thank you for watching the video